bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are off to a wonderful start. Amen. Hallelujah. We praise the God for who he is. Hallelujah. And we give honor to your pastor and give honor to Sister Manny for extending the invitation Amen. on today. Hallelujah. Yes. To the men and women of God. Yes. Ministers in the um, audience. Yes. We reverence you on today as well. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. And I would like to apologize in advance as well. Uh, my family and I, we are going to have to depart um, immediately after I speak as well because we have to be in North Carolina. So for those of you that are coming behind me, may God use you mightily. Amen. 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 I will be coming from Ephesians 6 and 14, and my armor is the breastplate of righteousness. Amen. And it's already been read in our hearing, and we thank God that the word is already blessed. Um, as I begin to prepare for my message, you know, I'm a teacher, and I like to look at everything, and I like to get out my dictionary, and I like to just break everything down and dissect everything. Yeah. So I begin to look at breastplate and righteousness separately. Mm -hmm. So we know that righteousness is to do what is right in God's eyes. Now, we know that man say and do a lot of things that look good, it sounds good, you know, they try to justify it and to try to find scripture to, to support what they're doing, but if it's not right in God's eyes, then it's not righteousness. Amen. Now, the Roman soldiers used the breastplate as part of their protective gear to cover the torso, uh -huh. which is used to protect our vital organs like the heart and the lungs. Uh -huh. Now, I'm a person, uh, as a child, when I was growing up, I had asthma, which affected my lungs. Uh -huh. And when you have asthma, your airway is constricted, uh -huh. and you're not able to breathe properly and it also, you, you have a lot of wheezing and everything, and it kind of constricts you from doing a lot of things that you would like to do. Uh -huh. And I'm a breast cancer survivor. Yeah. And yeah. And, and as I was going through chemotherapy, one of the medicines from the chemo damaged my heart, and it caused me to be in congestive heart failure. Now, when you experience congestive heart failure, it does not mean that your heart stops working. Right. It just means that it's not working properly. Uh -huh. Because your heart is weak and it's working so hard that it causes you to be tired and the, the blood that is not pumping in and out of your heart correctly. Mm -hmm. But see, in the spirit, when our heart is not right, it is because we have become bitter. Jesus. We have become angry. Yeah. We have unforgiveness in our heart. Yeah. And Jesus suffered, bled, and died on the cross. The blood covers us, but his blood can't do what it has already been ordained to do when we got an ugly heart. Yeah. See, the Bible says that man looks at the outside, but God looks at the heart. So when God looks at your heart, what is it that you want him to see? We find reasons and we find excuses to justify why our heart is not right. See, we often say things like, you don't know what they did to me. You don't know how they hurt me. Well, what they used me. We were in business together and they pulled the business right from under me. But whenever we experience things like that and our heart begins to get ugly, we need to ask ourselves, did I have on my breastplate? See, our heart needs to be clean, and it needs to be right. Yeah. But now see, the thing about when Roman soldiers wore the breastplate, the breastplate was connected to the belt. Mm -hmm. So which means that truth and righteousness, they go together. All right. They work together. See, when you know the truth, you will live holy. Yeah. See, when you know the truth, you will live right. Yeah. And how many of you know that holiness is still right? Yeah. Now see, now let, let, let's take a look at Job. Now, now with Job chapter 1 verse 1, it says that Job was a perfect and upright man. Mm -hmm. See, Job was living a righteous life so much so to the point that the enemy couldn't even mess with him. Mm -hmm. he, he couldn't touch him. He, Job's life was so good that he couldn't even touch Job's stuff. He couldn't even touch Job's children. Oh, man. See, when, when we do what is right, that's how the blood keeps us covered. It has that hedge of protection all around us. But 
now, let's look at what happens when we're unrighteous. The book of 1 Kings chapter 16, it tells the story about King Ahab. And the Bible says that King Ahab did more evil in the eyes of the Lord than any other king. Now, if you skip on over to 1 Kings chapter 22, it talks about King Ahab being killed. But now, look at how he died. Come on. The Bible says that someone drew their bow and hit the king between sections of his armor. Uh -huh. So what that, what that lets us know is that he physically had on his armor. Uh -huh. But because he wasn't living right, because he wasn't living holy, it did not protect him. See, we can't dress up on Sundays, come to church with our bow tie on, with our nice suits, with our stiletto heels. We come, we lift our hands, we say, Lord, I love you. Lord, I bless you. Lord, you are worthy. And we want to look like everything is all right. But then Monday through Friday, we live an unrighteous lifestyle. See, righteousness is not a one-time event. It is a lifetime action. As I, as I was preparing for my studies, I, I ran across this story. And, and the woman named Terry, she wanted to give her husband a Christmas gift. Mm -hmm. And so her husband was the only one bringing in the income at that time. So this was the month of September. She was preparing early. So she found the perfect gift for her husband but she did not have enough money. So she asked the owner of the store would he let her put some money down and hold the item for her, and she would pay a little bit each month, month after month, up until the month of December, in order to get it paid for, to give it as what she had intended to give it for as his Christmas gift. Uh -huh. Well, the owner of the store, it was just something about her. So what he said to her was, ma'am, I'm going to let you put some money down on it today. But I'm going to let you take this with you today. And then you can just come and just bring me something just whenever you get it. You know, it's okay. And she was so ecstatic. She was just elated by the favor that this man of God had shown to her. She was so excited that she couldn't contain it. So when her husband came home from work that evening, she went ahead and gave him the gift. So fast forward to a few weeks later in the month of October. She got a knock at her door and it was the police letting her know that her husband had been shot. See, Terry's husband was a police officer. And the gift she had given him was a bulletproof vest. But because he already had what he needed, he was not killed, he was not wounded, was a slight prune. See that she waited to give her husband that Christmas gift in December. Her husband would not have been allowed to give. See, we have to have on the whole armor at all times. We never know when the enemy is coming. We never know how he is coming. We never know who he's going to use. We never know what he's going to use. But if we're equipped, if we got our 